it's nice to hear a lot of you having conversations about prayer. I'm sure that, you know, it, there's a lot to be said about prayer. Um, if I'm completely honest, when Pastor Moses asked me to preach and if I'd have known it would have been on prayer, I maybe would have said pass. Um, <laughs> good thing I didn't know and I said yes. Uh, yeah, prayer is complicated for me. Um, I drill with my family. The only time I really pr pray is when I'm looking for parking. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I wanted to do my best to be here to talk about what prayer means to me. And in all honesty, it's, it's complicated. It's very complicated. I'm sure for many of you, it's, it's, it's like that as well. Um, one of my earliest memories of praying is when I was six years old. Um, I was suffering from nightmares. Um, and one particular night, it was really, really bad. And so I woke up crying and going to my mom. My mom brought me back to bed and she said that we needed to pray. Let's pray to God to ask for the nightmares to, to go away. Ask God to take them away. So we prayed that night and the nightmares never came back. I couldn't believe it. They were just gone. This was the first time I experienced the power of prayer and more importantly, God's love for me. I grew up going to church with my family, and we were taught in church that prayer is really important, that it's an essential part of our faith. And given my experience as a six-year-old, I, I really took it to heart. We were also taught that being gay was wrong. I struggled with my sexuality from a very young age, and because I was told that it was wrong, what did I do? I began to pray. I prayed to God to change me, to make me good. I prayed for years and years, and to overcompensate, I threw myself into different ministries to try to prove to God, but I think also to prove to myself that I was good enough that I had enough faith for God to change me, that God will hear my prayers. I believe for a long time, the reason that God didn't change me because I lacked faith. I was taught in church that maybe God doesn't answer your prayers because you're not praying hard enough. You're not, you don't have enough faith. You're not praying with conviction. And, and I believed all of those things. Eventually, you know, as an adult, um, in my 20s, I couldn't take it anymore. And I decided to stop praying. And to walk away from Christianity altogether. To walk away from the church and to walk away from God. I tried so hard to prove my worth to God and for what? I realized that it was too hard and I was just too tired. I needed to walk away from my own emotional, physical, psychological, and mental well-being. It was taking a toll. It was really taking a toll on me. And I couldn't, I couldn't do it anymore. So I walked away. I'm thinking, you know what, we'll just go our separate ways. God, I see you, I believe in you, great but maybe, maybe this isn't for me. And I was at peace with it. I was okay with it. I said, we're just, it's okay. It's fine. But of course, God wasn't about to give up on me. Uh, in God's pursuit of me, I got really fed up one night. And I just said, God, you, you know, what do you want from me? You won't change me, so, so what do you want? And in that moment, the Holy Spirit filled me up with so much love, I began to cry. 
God didn't change me because I didn't need changing. God loved me just the way I am. Maybe I was praying for the wrong thing. Right? I, I was so fixated on wanting God to change me, wanting to be good, wanting to be right in the eyes of God and in the, in the eyes of his people, the church. I was doing all of these things to try to prove myself. And I think what got lost in all of that was God's love. I forgot about God's love. That love that I experienced when I was a six-year-old, when I prayed, God, take my nightmares away. I got caught up in trying to do the right things. Pastor Moses preached last week about the story about Mary and Martha. Sometimes it's the Martha in us being distracted and wanting to do more, wanting to do the right things, when what we really need is to allow the Mary in us to stop and just be with God. If you think about it, where, where is Mary in proximity to Jesus? It says that Mary was at Jesus' feet, right? She was right there at his feet, just taking in everything that Jesus had to offer. Martha, on the other hand, was busy going about doing her tasks. And so she was real, really far away from Jesus, right? Being busy doing things, thinking she was doing the right thing. Right? When all Jesus was asking Martha to do is just stop. Come and be with me at my feet. It's, it's not a coincidence that this story comes right before our scripture today. This closeness, being at Jesus' feet, this is setting us up for, for Luke chapter 11, the section that we read today, the passage we read today. Jesus prayed often. He prayed frequently. And in particular, in Luke's, Luke's gospel, Luke mentions it many, many times, more than any other gospel. And the disciples have been observing and seeing Jesus spend this time praying with God. And on this particular instance, after Jesus was done with, with, with praying, they, they asked Jesus, Lord, teach us to pray, as John taught his disciples. And Jesus replies with the Lord's Prayer. We are all very familiar with the Lord's Prayer. Um, it appears twice, once in Matthew's Gospel and once in Luke's Gospel. A lot of similarities, but there are a few key differences that, that I want to focus on. The first word in the Lord's Prayer is Father. Right? The, the disciples have heard Jesus refer to God as Father many, many, many times. And in this instance, Jesus is instructing his disciples to refer to God as Father. See, in Matthew's version, he uses a more formal address when, when calling God Father, one that makes the distinction between Father in heaven and we as people here on earth. But in, in Luke's, he uses Father as Abba, Abba Father. The Lord's Prayer reveals to the disciples the father-son relationship between Jesus and God. And really, it's a model for how the disciples should see themselves in relation to God. Jesus saying, you too can God, call God Father. You too can have that very close very intimate relationship, the one that I've been having with God. You too can be at his feet, right?
See, at this point in, in Luke's gospel, uh, it's setting up for what's to come. Jesus, Jesus knows where, where, where this is going. This is, this, he's getting ready. And what his death will mean for his disciples, right? They're going to be without Jesus. And so he's telling his disciples, this is what you need to do. I mean, the disciples don't know, but Jesus understands that when he's gone, they're going to need someone to look to. So he tells his disciples to look to God, to pray to God for all of their needs. This parent-child relationship model comes up again in verses 11 and 12. Again, Jesus refers to God as Heavenly Father. This is the type of relationship Jesus was trying to reveal to his disciples. This whole time, the disciples have been with Jesus. They've been looking to him for all of their needs. And when he's not there, he's saying, you, you, you can ask God, God your Father, for everything that you need. other difference that I want to focus on is in the context of the Lord's Prayer. In, the, in Matthew's version, Jesus is instructing his disciples how to pray, whereas in Luke's version, the disciples actually ask Jesus. That asking piece is really important, and I don't know if you, you caught that in, in these verses, but it's, it's this constant Thing that we need to ask God, we need to ask God, we need to seek God, we need to, we need to search for God, we need to, you know, if there's a lot of action on our end. So it begins with the disciples asking Jesus, teach us how to pray. Jesus goes on to tell these stories about the friend knocking at the friend's door for bread right? Friend is, is knocking, saying, hey, I need some bread, my friend's here. And then another story about the, ch the child asking their parent for food. Again, Jesus, knowing that what will happen to him making sure that his disciples will be ready for, for when he's not there, emphasizing the importance of asking, and also understanding the importance of the type of relationship that they're supposed to have with God, very intimate, very close, like a, like a parent to their child. All to say that the Heavenly Father will give the Holy Spirit to those who ask, right? So the beginning of this section, the, G the disciples are asking Jesus, teach us how to pray. And it ends with, the Heavenly Father will give the Holy Spirit to those who ask. The Holy Spirit is a good gift that is bestowed upon the disciples in Jesus' absence by God the Father, and it's also given to us, his, his children. I shared that moment when I asked God, what do you want from me? I asked God, what? What is it? And in that instant, I felt the Holy Spirit, and I was overcome, and I began to cry. I felt so much love. To know God's love for me is, is knowing that I am perfect just the way I am. For so long, I felt so much distance from God. But in that moment, I felt so close, so intimate, like I was being enveloped in God's arms. That is what prayer should feel like. And it's really those same arms I felt when I was six years old. It's the same God, it's the same love, it's the same Holy Spirit given to us. 
as a good gift from God, our Father. Let us pray.